children good evening welcome to bible bites i hope you all are doing good happy to see you again this sunday all right so before we begin let us ask jesus to help us shall we pray heavenly father we come into your presence and we thank you for this beautiful day thank you for keeping us safe and alive we thank you jesus for who you are for your love for your mercy for your loving kindness is better than life we give you thanks and we give you glory because you are our savior and our loving father we give you glory and honor be with us and help us today in jesus name we all pray amen and all god's children said Amen. That's right. Okay, children. So today we are going to sing a song, and this song is a Hindi song. It, this the song means that Jesus is with me. Jesus is with us forever. No matter in what situation you and I are in, Jesus is always with us. All right, children. Let's sing along. Dunia ke in lambera sto me. Dunia ke in lambera sto me. because it's time for golden nugget repeat the words after me psalm 17 6 psalm 17 6 one more time psalm 17 6 I call on you O oh God 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 because you will answer me 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 Psalm 17:6 Psalm 17:6 Children I hope you got this it's such a tiny verse right so let us say it together last time here we go at the count of 3 2 and 1 Psalm 17 Six. I call on you, O God, because you will answer me. Psalm seventeen six. You did a great job. All right children let's focus for 15 are you excited to know what happened next let's look into it while kabu is there at the church and as he heard from miss knowles 
what Jesus had done to Saul, he understood that the voice that he heard was the voice of Jesus. That's right, the voice that he heard was the voice of Jesus. And today, as we have learned the golden nugget, let us see how Jesus became a heavenly father to Kabu and rescued him and heard his every prayer. So as Kabu was in the church, he gets to meet his friend Afram. That's right. And then as they are there in that place, he slowly starts to understand what the Bible says. He starts learning to read and write in the next coming days. And he learns it from Miss Knowles. Miss Knowles takes so much care to teach Samuel Morris. Now, after Kabu understood that the voice was the voice of Jesus, he gave his heart to Jesus. He understood how only Jesus could be his savior. And he started learning more about him from the scriptures. That's right, we all have it with us. And that is our Bibles, Bible. We call it the best book. That's right, children. So he started reading every page from the Bible. He learned reading and he started reading more and more. And soon after that, his name was changed to Samuel Morris. That's right. So Miss Knowles called him Samuel Morris. As he was sitting under a tree and studying God's word, Miss Knowles comes to him and she says, are you still studying Kabu? And to that question, Samuel replies, Miss Knowles, you've forgotten. Now I have a new name for a new life. Children, when we give our life to Jesus and know that Jesus is our savior, Jesus gives us a new life, just like Samuel Morris had a new life. And that is how he had a great desire to know more about Lord Jesus. He started asking Miss Knowles so many questions. What about this, Miss Knowles? What about this, Miss Knowles? What about God? What about Jesus? What about salvation? He had so many different questions in his mind and he had a desire and he said, I am so happy, Miss Knowles, that people like you have come to Africa to talk to us and tell us about the love of Jesus. But I want to become just like you one day. I want to grow up to be a missionary because I want to tell my people, my country people, my, my own people about the love of Jesus. And as he was standing there and talking to Miss Knowles, he had a kind of feeling and he said, is it possible to be happy and sad at the same time, Miss Knowles? Because he was happy because he said, I am blessed to have known Lord Jesus, but I am sad because my people, my father and all of our tribe do not know the love of Jesus yet. And as he starts to talk more and more, he says, who is the one who taught you, Miss Knowles? And Miss Knowles says, I have told you all that I know and, and there's nothing else. I cannot answer any of your questions. And Samuel Morris asks her, who was the one who taught you? And she says, I have learned it from a person called Steve even merit and he is in New York that is in America and the moment he hears that he says okay goodbye Miss Knowles I'm going to go to America and meet Stephen Merritt but Miss Knowles is like what what, what? Where, where are you going it, it's not somewhere close by it's so far how can you even possibly go so far you can't make it but then Samuel Morris he runs to the shore and as he sees there would be a big ship there waiting for him and he pleads with the captain to take him along with him and then the captain refuses but Samuel Morris kneels down and he prays he said my heavenly father will you answer my prayer I want to go to America and learn more about you that is when I can go back and talk to all my people about you so please help me board this ship and when he prayed that after a while the captain says yes you can come on board and travel along with us and so he just goes into the ship and they travel to New York in America and and as they started journeying through the ship, it was a very frightful thing because immediately after they set sail, after a while, there happens to be a big storm. And Samuel Morris, he did not have any experience of a seafare. He never traveled before. 
Children, imagine how would it be if it was the first time you were taking a flight or if it was the first time you were going on a ship. I've never been on a ship. I wonder how it would be like. But imagine what it would be like if you're going for the first time on a train. It's frightening, right? We like hold back and what's going to happen? And exactly, Samuel Morris had so much of seasickness and very sadly to add on more to that, there happened to be a big storm. Everybody is frightened because of the heavy winds that were blowing. Blowing. The ship was moving this way and that way. It was tossing to and fro to the winds and everybody were frightened and Samuel Morris was frightened. As you can see in the picture, he was holding fast to one big pole that was there. And then the captain was a very bad and an angry man. He was always blaming and, and you know scolding and treating Samuel Morris in a very bad way, cruel way. He was always having that you know angry face and he would say, what is it? You you have come unnecessarily on my ship. I, I shouldn't have let you into my ship. That's how he was treating him. Because for every question that he asked, Samuel Morris would, would say, I am going to know more about my heavenly father. I know my heavenly father will take care. So you know, this captain, angry man, he was very annoyed with Samuel Morris. And soon after that, Samuel Morris prayed. And you know, after that night, the storm became still and the whole sea was calm and then the ship was back to normal and they set sail and went on. As they kept traveling in the sea, one of the crew member, he was a Malaysian and he was a very angry man. Nobody could control his tempers. He would be so angry that he would kill somebody at times. So everybody were terrorized by him. Everybody was scared. Everybody were like, oh my, it's better to be careful with this man. And that kind of a person was on the ship. And somebody was talking to Samuel Morris and they were telling you have to be careful with this Malaysian but Samuel worked so hard on the ship and he did so much to help the ship move on and to find the favor of the captain. As they kept moving it was time that Samuel Morris had to go down into the room of the captain to clean his room. So he just gently walked down the room and then he was there inside with the captain to clean his entire room. So as he sat to clean you know what happens? The captain I told you he's not a very good man so he just kicked him you know and then he just falls down Samuel Morris falls down for what for no reason and then Samuel Morris never retaliated he said hey captain why did you do that to me you're a very bad man did he say that no he didn't say that we cannot tolerate if we are treated wrongly isn't that children? But Samuel Morris kept calm. He trusted in Jesus, his heavenly father. And for every situation, he prayed to the heavenly father and he spoke to him while he was there in the captain's room. He was nicely humming to himself. La, 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 la. I don't know what he was humming, but he was humming to himself. And the captain was very angry. He's like, stop that and keep your singing to yourself. Why are you doing that? And he was drinking a lot of alcohol he had a bottle that's not a good drink right so he was drinking and you know Samuel Morris questions him why do you do that captain when you have Jesus you will have peace but then captain says angrily enough keep it to yourself drinking rum gives me a lot of peace and that's what he says and then so Samuel keeps quiet but suddenly they hear a gunshot up there and they just pause for a minute as they rushed up they saw that one of the person in the ship was bleeding his hand was bleeding what happened when they looked they saw this malaysian angry person with a gun in his hand and as the captain came forward and he said what are you doing stop it what happened that malaysian person put the gun right in front of the captain and to the captain's surprise samuel morris came forward and he was blocking the way. He put his hands forward and he was looking to the Malaysian very boldly and saying, no, God doesn't want you to do this. And everybody was surprised. And he was still holding his gun in his hand, ready to shoot anybody who came his way. And then, you know, Samuel Morris stood boldly and faced him and said, no, you don't have to do this. God doesn't want us to do this. God doesn't want us to do this. Please put your gun down. At the time when he said this, we do not know what happened, but miraculously, that person put his gun down and he lost himself and he just sat down and he was weeping. And soon after that, 
this captain, he's supposed to be very thankful to him, right? But he became very angry and he just pulled Samuel Morris and he said, you boy, come into my room. I need to talk to you. And then he takes him into his room and he says, as Samuel was walking into the room, the captain asked, what happened? How did you do that? How did all that happen? How could you just come before me and save my life? And he says, it's not me, Captain. It's not me. It is my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father helped us. My Heavenly Father gave me the boldness. And my Heavenly Father is here with us. But then this Captain was so annoyed. He had so much of sorrow in his heart that he just you know he just he just threw the bottle of rum that he had in his hands and he just knelt down and he said can there be a god in this god forsaken ship and he wept and cried and he said i want this jesus too isn't that amazing and samuel morris and captain as they were kneeling down in the room they asked jesus to help them isn't that amazing, children? And very soon after that, the captain became a close friend to Samuel Morris. And very soon, they reached the shores of New York. In the year 1891, September, they finally landed on New York, USA. And that's when the captain had to say goodbye to Samuel Morris. And he said, Samuel, you have been a very close brother to me. And now I don't know how you're going to go because this place is a very big place place it is a huge land i don't know what dangers you may get into but then you know right what samuel said don't worry captain my heavenly father takes care of me and my heavenly father answers to my prayer and he says you see captain my heavenly father rescued me while i was a slave my heavenly father put me on the ship my heavenly father rescued me from the big storm my heavenly father was with me when I was with sickness. My heavenly father helped me to come all the way to New York. And now I know that my heavenly father will answer my every prayer and take care of me. And when he said that, you know, the captain laughed and they both had a big laugh. And they said, yes, my boy, I know. Now he is my heavenly father too, said the captain. And with that note, they said goodbye to each other. Bye. Bye, Captain. Hopefully, God willing, I'll see you some other time. And he says, bye, Samuel Morris. And now Samuel was going straight away to meet Stephen Merritt. And so, children, I do not know how he's going to meet Stephen Merritt in such a big city. But let us see what happens next. Okay. But before that, I want to tell you, Samuel Morris's heavenly father answered all of his prayers. He kept him all through the while. So today, let us learn to trust our heavenly father that when we pray, he will answer us. That's what the golden nugget was, right? Call unto me and I will answer you. God says that to you and to me. When we call out to Jesus, he is more than ready. He's quick to answer us. And as Samuel Morris had a desire to learn more about God through the scriptures, you and I need to have a desire to know more of God through the Bible. Yes, children, how do we hear the voice of God? By reading the Bible. Do we hear a voice like the voice from heaven which said, run, Kabu, run? No, children, when we read the Bible, God speaks to you and God speaks to me. Our Heavenly Father speaks to us through the Bible and you and I can speak to Him through prayer. Like Samuel Morris who depended on his Heavenly Father for every help, you and I should depend upon Him for every help. Shall we do that today? Shall we close our eyes and ask Jesus to help us through? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful lesson, Lord. We thank you because Lord Samuel believed that my Father answers me. Yes, Lord, this evening, help each one of us to believe that you are a father who answers us, Lord. You are ready with your ears attentive to our prayers. So help us to talk to you every day, Lord, about our every need, believing that our Heavenly Father will answer us. Lord, be with us. Help us to have a desire like Samuel Morris, Lord, to learn more from the Bible and to learn to hear you through the pages of the Bible. Continue 
to be with us and bless this word to each one of us. We thank you for this precious time. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you children for listening patiently. Let us see what happens through the story in the next week. Until then, see you all. Bye-bye.